Confused about which of those phosphate buffers or salts is which, monobasic or bibasic? Here's a quick tip. Count the counter ions. If there are two counter ions, so you have two sodiums or two potassiums, that's going to be your dibasic. And if you have one counter ion, that's going to be your monobasic. So Na2HPO4, it's got two counter ions. It's going to be dibasic. And uh, like same with K2HPO4, that would be dibasic. If you have monobasic, what you're going to have is you're going to have NaH2PO4 um, um, or you would have KH2PO4. So why this works? Basically, a base is something that takes a proton. If there's no proton to take, well, then that site is going to be negatively charged, at least in some cases, and it's the case in these phosphates. The phosphates basically have three hydrogens that they can give or take. Think there are three hydrogens total, and then we have kind of like two spots up for grabs. They can both be acting as bases, in which case we have dibasic. In that case, then those oxygens, without the proton, they're going to be negatively charged. If we have a salt, a salt is a neutral combo. So we need to have something to neutralize that negative charge. For each negative charge we have, for each of those sites that can act as a base and take a proton, we're going to need a counter ion, so we're going to need a sodium. We're going to need a potassium, and so that's why if we have the N, um, we have two counter ions, we're going to be dibasic, and if we have one counter ion, we're going to have monobasic. Now you'll also see the terms monoprotic and diprotic. Remember that we have three kind of like hydrogen positions, because that fourth one is the oxygen with the double bond. If you think about like it in the non-resonance form, it's got the double bond to an oxygen, and you've got three oxygens with a hydrogen or not a hydrogen. Um, basically, you have three hydrogen positions. One of them is typically going to like always be taken at physiological pHs. So a pH is like in our body and stuff that we're actually caring about. And so then we have those two up for grabs. So if those two are both bases, we're going to have, um, if those two are both base, if we have basic, then those two are both going to be um, deprotonated and we're going to have counter ions. But if you have the acid form, the di, um, the monobasic form, that basically means that those other two hydrogens are up for grabs as acids. And so that's why we have diprotic. So remember that only one of those is actually going to be really given taking um, at these pHs that we're dealing with. But you have diprotic, you've got those two hydrogens. And then you have the third spot, which has a counter ion. So you still have a counter ion, but just one of them rather than two. Now, at the pHs in which we're typically using these buffers, like 5.8 to 8 or so, we're really only dealing with one proton that's coming or going physically from the molecule. The one with the pKa, so the pH at which half is protonated, half is deprotonated, and then you gotta get acid base, good buffer, booyah. Only one of the protons actually has a pKa that's in that range. So you've got that proton that's about um, 6.86. Makes it good for one pH on either side, hence the about 5.8 to 8 range. Now there's those two other protons, but one of them is like never gonna be there because basically you've gotta get all the way down to about two for it to protonate it. And that's why you typically always have at least one counter ion. And then the other end of the scale, or basically you've got a pKa of about 12, which is why that one's pretty much always gonna be protonated. So I like, there's really only one proton coming and going, but there's kind of, when it comes to the naming, it's easier in my head sometimes to think about there, remember that there's three H's that could be like up for grabs. Remember one of them is like never gonna be taken, one of them is always gonna be taken, and then you really only have that one coming and going. But if you remember three, you can remember that dibasic goes with monoprotic, and that diprotic goes with monobasic, so you've got those three. If you wanna think about it in terms of di dibasic or monobasic, then you're really only thinking about like two, and one of them is being take, given or um, taken, so that you can remember where you go up to H2. However, it works in your head to think about, but don't get confused when I talk about some of the numbering um, or some of the naming when I say about like three or two up for grabs or whatever. Only one is really given and taking, and so therefore you only have to really worry about that one, which makes it, you have two solutions that you have to use, but there's really those three kind of like spots that if you went to the extremes, you could get them all filled or you could get them all removed. Um, but in the range that we care about, we're not going to. Those counter ions, you're going to have one in the case of your monobasic, which is the same as the diprotic. And then you're going to have two in the case of your dibasic, which is the same as the monoprotic. So remember, every place you're acting as a base, you're going to need a counter ion there to counteract that negative charge in the salt, which is a neutral combo of acid and base, or of negative and positive, I mean. So 
If you want a buffer at a specific pH, you're going to mix acid and base. So you're going to mix the, the dibasic and the monobasic solutions, and you can calculate how much of them are, you're going to mix, henderson hasselbach goodiness, um, in order to get a variety of pHs from about a pH of 5.8 to a pH of about 8. Now, you could go ahead and weigh out the solids each time you want to do this, but the easier thing is to make a one molar solution of the dibasic and of the monobasic solutions. Depending on what you want, you might want a sodium phosphate buffer, in which case you're going to use your sodium, um, the sodium phosphate salts, or you might want a potassium phosphate one, which you use potassium phosphate salts. And you can make like a one molar solution of each of these and then mix them in ratios that are given in like a table. You just mix the pre-mixed liquid and then you get the buffer that you want. Now, working with the dye basic can be a pain in the butt because it tends to precipitate, especially if you like go in and you kind of like some, you sort of like nucleate the crystallation and then all of a sudden like your nice clear mixture was precipitated out. Don't worry, you can heat it up. You can also sonicate it to help. But what you probably want to do is actually have two solutions of it going. And that way, one, one, if one of them precipitates, you've got another one that you could be using while you're heating up and re, um, re-dissolving the other one. The precipitation is less of an issue at lower concentrations, so you can also make a lower concentration of your stock solutions as well. Um, just do be aware that it will precipitate out of you. Um, if you've got like a bath sonicator, you could use that. Um, heat it up, it, um, it'll dissolve back, but then you don't want to use it while it's hot. Um, so you get have two of them going then just look up a table look at how much you need to mix them you might need to change the amounts depending on your volume and your concentration that you want um but making them from the solutions is um how i like to go rather than weighing out the solids each time you can look at tables um they're really helpful so remember dye basic has two counter ions so na2 or k2 hpo4 it, so it's monoprotic um because it's got those two counter ions it's got those two basic sites one protic site um, and then if you have the monobasic, then you have one counter ion, so one Na or one K, and then two H, so H2, you've got those two pro oxygens with protons. Then one of them can give it up in these physiological pHs. If you go down to a really, really low pH, like we're saying in the round two or something, then you can get the third one to ditch. Um, but typically we're dealing with those two solutions, and so we don't need to worry about that. Um, just those pH, the ones that have the pKa that's more like physiological, like bodily-like, because that's what we typically want to make our buffers in.